Surgical asepsis. Surgical asepsis is also known as sterile technique. Surgical asepsis is a set of practices that will maintain an area free from microorganisms, as by surgical scrub or sterile technique. Surgical asepsis is used to maintain sterility. Use of effective sterile technique means that no organisms are carried to the client. Microorganisms are destroyed before they can enter the body. A sterile technique is used when changing dressings, administering parenteral medications, and performing surgical and other procedures such as urinary catheterization. With surgical asepsis, first, items are sterilized, and then their contact with any unsterile items is prevented. When a sterile item touches an unsterile article, it becomes contaminated. It is no longer sterile. Disinfection and sterilization. Disinfection. Disinfection is a process that results in the destruction of most pathogens, but not necessarily their spores. Common methods of disinfection include the use of alcohol wipes a hexachlorophene or chlorohexidine gluconate soap scrub, or a povidone iodine scrub to kill microorganisms on the skin. Stronger disinfectants include phenol and mercury bichloride, which are too strong to be used on living tissue. Boiling can be used to disinfect inanimate objects. However, it does not destroy all microorganisms or spores. Sterilization. Sterilization it is the process of exposing items or equipment to steam under pressure or chemical disinfectants, long enough to kill all microorganisms and spores. Exposure to steam at 18 pounds of pressure at a temperature of 125 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes will kill even the toughest organisms. An automatic steam sterilizer is called an autoclave. Some chemicals can also be used to sterilize an object. However, chemical disinfectants powerful enough to destroy germs or extreme temperature cannot be used on certain articles, such as plastic at sharp cutting instruments are usually sterilized by dry heat or chemicals. Needles used for injections are always discarded. Other methods of sterilization include radiation and gas sterilization with ethylene oxide. Items to be used to maintain sterility techniques. 1. Hair covering. In sterile environments, a cap or hood is worn to cover the hair. Remember that no hair can show. If the hair is long, a special type of hood will be worn. 2. Surgical mask. In strict sterile situations, such as in an operation room or with protective isolation, the mask covers the mouth and nose. The purpose of the mask is to form a barrier to stop the transmission of pathogens. In the operation room or during other sterile procedures, the mask prevents harmful microorganisms in your respiratory tract from spreading to the client. When the client has an infection, the mask protects you from his or her pathogens. 3. Sterile gown. Sterile gowns are commonly worn in the operation room, with protective isolation, and sometimes in the delivery room. The hands touch only the part of the sterile gown that will touch the body after the gown is in place. Therefore, touch only the inside of the gown. Someone else ties the strings. The back of the gown is considered contaminated, even though it was sterile when put on. Any part of the gown below waist level and above nipple level is also considered contaminated. Be careful when wearing a sterile gown not to touch anything that is unsterile. 4. Sterilized Gloves for some procedures, sterile gloves are worn. Remember that once gloves are on, touching anything unsterile contaminates them. 
Therefore, make all preparations before putting on gloves, procedures for putting on sterile gloves, 1. Wash the hands to limit the spread of microorganisms. 2. Open the outer glove package on a clean, dry, flat surface at waist level or higher. 3. If there is an inner package, open it in the same way, keeping the sterile gloves on the inside surface with the cuffs facing you. 4. Use one hand to grasp the inside, upper surface of the glove's cuff with the opposite hand. Lift the glove up and clear it of the wrapper. 5. Insert the opposite hand into the glove, placing the thumb and finger in the proper openings. Pull the gloves into place, touching only the inside of the glove at the cuff. Leave the cuff in place. 6. Slip the fingers of the sterile gloved hand under the cuff of the remaining glove while keeping the thumb pointed outward. 7. Insert the ungloved hand into the glove. Pull on the second glove, only touching the sterile gloves outside with the other sterile gloved hand and keeping the fingers inside the cuff. Adjust the gloves and snap the cuffs into place. Avoid touching the inside glove and wrist area. 8. Keep the sterile gloved hands above waist level. Make sure not to touch the clothes. Keep hands folded when not performing a procedure. Both actions help to prevent accidental contamination.